by now you're probably pretty familiar with the console and you can move on to some more advanced things. Some of those more advanced things are things like being able to find multiple items at a time or even putting conditionals in place. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's open up another console session by typing in Rails C. And now, uh, if you want to search by a single ID, so if we look at uh, project all again and bring up all of them, uh, let's say that we only wanted to bring up this one, project ID 5. Uh, there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, the one that I want to start off with though is by actually going to an ID so something I do on a pretty regular basis for work is if a particular record in the database is having issues or there's something kind of weird about it that maybe is causing a bug I can just go straight to that ID so we know that project ID is 5 so I can do project.find 5 inside parentheses and it brings up that one project and you could even do anything like we did before like storing it in a variable and now we have our project uh, and we can access it by just typing in p or by whatever variable name that you want to put into it now what if I wanted to actually find multiple IDs at the same time and have an array brought back to me that's also pretty easy so if I do project find and simply give an array declaration here so say one three and five and in the parentheses you can see it brings back an array of items now this is a little bit different and it's really important that you take this into consideration as a rails developer i promise you this will come up because it's uh, come up for me it sometimes even comes up for me sometimes if i uh, uh, get lazy for a little while if you're bringing back multiple items those multiple items are going to come back in an array. You can see these uh, square brackets right here. This is in comparison with when we brought back a single item. You can see that it's bringing back just a single object. Now what the difference with that is, is when it's a single object, you can set, you can put a message or a method on it. You can ask for one of the values. So if I do p dot description it's gonna say it equals my cool description because it has that one element and then it goes and finds the description attribute and then it lets us print that off now what if I go back to my query where I had an array and I'll say a equals this so now we have uh, our array stored in a now if I do a dot description it's going to throw a big error right here and the reason is because no method error undefined method description it thinks because it's an array it says okay there's no way he could be wanting to ask for the description for an array because that wouldn't even make any sense you, you have to go and iterate through each one of those items so if I did something like a dot each do and I'll just put that and now it'll let me do a dot description and then end and oh, this one I actually put I, I made a oh, small error on there so this one uh, a dot description should actually be e description so let me redo that so a dot each and then uh, I'll just type it in E dot description. I was trying to call it on the array again and you can see here it prints out uh, the descriptions for each one of those and so uh, right now it's going to be printing out the objects because I didn't actually explicitly tell it to print but we can go back and redo that so I can say puts and and here you go right here it, it printed out any description I want my cool description and my cool description and then it printed out those objects that it's associated with right here so the reason why I showed you this it may seem a little bit confusing it's because this is something I've seen a lot of rails developers 
do and it is because it can be a little confusing sometimes you think oh this object's coming back to me in this query and i want to do something to it either i want to grab the values from it that doesn't happen quite as often as say i want to make all of them capitalized that's something i've seen happen quite a bit so uh, if i want to do something let's go back with our examples again so we have p now if I do p dot title upcase, this will bring us back our title in uppercase. Now if I do a dot title upcase, it's gonna throw an error because it doesn't know what title that we're looking for. In fact, it thinks that title is a method we're trying to call on this array, and you can't call title on the method because it has multiple ones and even if it only had one you still would have to be able to do that because you'd need to pick out the item in the array so a few ways you could do that is you could do a you could do what we did where we iterated through it or you could do something like a dot last dot title upcase and then that'll do the same exact thing it'll bring it in and then you can uh, you can treat it as a single value so the same way that we did project.last because really that project all just brought back an array you can do a.last and it'll bring you the last element of that array okay so hopefully that makes sense to you and it, I promise it's something that you're going to want to be able to learn because it will uh, cause you some heartache if you're uh, working on things and uh, uh, you start trying to call uh, different attributes on an array so that's uh, that's that side of it now another thing that you're going to be wanting to do is to use conditionals so if I want to find a specific project, so say I want to bring in this project ID 5 again, but I don't know what the ID is. All I know is what the title is. I can do that by doing project where and say title and then type in project 2. And you can see it goes through, it does a different type of query this time. It looks through projects where the project's title is equal to project two. So this is a, a pretty cool way of being able to uh, run queries and it doesn't have to just be on the title, you could do it with the description. And uh, you can also do the opposites of. So if I do project where dot not title is equal to project two, I have to put in a string. And you can see it brings back all the values where the title is not equal to project two, which in this case is all of them. So this is something that's uh, very helpful. Uh, and this is a query that you can run not only in the console for debugging and for learning about your data, but it's also something that you can put inside of say one of your controller queries. So inside your controller, which is what uh, runs a lot of your different queries, you may want to put a conditional because you don't want a index page that shows all the values to actually show all the records in the database. A good example of this would be, say that you have a blog and on your homepage, you don't wanna show ones that have been archived. So you can run a query, I'm gonna make this up because we don't have a post model, but I could say post where not status is set to archived. And so if a query like this, where you have a model of posts for a blog post, and you run this, what it's gonna do, it's gonna return all the values that are not set to archived, and which is what you'd want if you only want your live posts on there. So that's just one example of what you could do with the query. But uh, so if you have gone through this lesson, great job, you've learned how to find items by their ID, find them whether they're first or last, be able to pull multiple items by the ID. You've learned how to iterate over values. You've known the different, you now know the difference between what's returned with a single value versus the array that comes back when you ask for multiple. And then also how to use a conditional such as where to be able to set certain 
attributes or certain attribute values that you either want to come back or that you don't want to come back, which is very standard for a SQL query. So with these all in mind, you now have a pretty good idea on how to access all the elements in your database.